So, so George, you know, you did, um, I think, one of the greatest sort of acts in terms of communication and marketing around a brand that you were previously associated with, which was, interestingly, a very tool-oriented, very, you know, flight-oriented brand called IWC. And you transformed that from, again, a very sort of, uh, how shall I say, pragmatic brand into one of the sort of leading global luxury lifestyle watch brands, right? Is this the same idea for Breitling? The starting point, I think, is quite different. Today, uh, Breitling is very much uh, positioned in the hardcore aviation uh, products. Sure. Um, the products are very big. Yes. Uh, products are, are loud, and this is not negative, right. but it's, it's what the positioning is. Uh, but I think the, the brand, when you look into the history, has uh, much more to say uh, than aviation. We will keep the aviation uh, pillar, which is very important. Sure. We, will, we will keep these uh, uh, big products because it's very successful. People love it. We love it. Uh, but I think the, when, when we look into the history, what Breitling did with, um, uh, f for instance, the Premier or the Top Time, or the co-pilot, they did other type of products which were also more elegant, smaller, especially, which is especially important here in Asia. Sure. So I think, uh, uh, and when you also look in terms of communication, you as a, as a professional cyclist, you know that uh, Brighting <laughs> was, a, um, you know, timekeeper of the Tour de France, sure. of the Giro, et cetera. Sure. They were in sailing, skiing, et cetera. So I think with that, the price range where we are, we're going to, to, to go wider in terms of offering. Fantastic. Let's start a little bit with the watch that's on your wrist, the Navitimer 8. Yeah. So uh, a little bit of, of uh, controversy in some ways because it's a Navitimer without a slide rule. However, I've attended the presentation in Switzerland and, and actually the Navitimer 8 is based on cockpit instruments that did not have slide rules. Is that correct? That's perfectly right. Um, of course, when you launch such a, a product which is so different than what people were used of the last 15 or 20 years, of course you create controversy. Uh, in terms of design, in terms of name, in terms of technical features. Uh, but everything we're doing, everything, uh, has historical roots. And, and this product in particular, both in terms of turning bezel, which were uh, on exactly the same on the uh, board instruments, as in terms of name, because there are two or three products, or many products, called Navi Timer without uh, having a sliding rule. Uh, in terms of, of dial design, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think we're very true to the roots of the brand, but it's surprising, and and the hardcore fans, and I understand that, I totally appreciate that, uh, have some difficulties. On the other side, we're gaining new uh, new customer bases sure. uh, um, all around the world. Because when I first started, the first comments online were. Oh my God, could you please make smaller watches? <laughs> sure. Um, so you launched this watch in Shanghai. Tell me a little bit about what China represents to you, because I, I have, um, I find it really interesting that the, the, the market in China seems to be back on the upswing a little bit. And we have a lot of friends that are in a club called Shanghai Watch Gang. Yes. And the recurring statement that I hear from these guys um, was that the Chinese bought a ton of watches from the 1990s to about 2010. And all the young guys in China now recognize that they bought totally the wrong watches. Right. Yes, of course. I mean, the market's becoming more and more mature, right. for sure. People are much more knowledgeable yes. about the watches. People are traveling. People are online. They see what is uh, successful. They understand the history of the brand, yes. the true values of the brand. And, um, uh, and, and suddenly they're discovering uh, things we might be aware of in Western Europe or in, 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 in Japan or in other uh, regions of the world. Uh, who were facing the watch industry sing, since much longer. Uh, but that's a normal uh, phenomenon at Breitling also, you know, aviation, how, how um, emotionally attractive is aviation in China with, with not such a history. Right. You know, in China, when they think about aviation, it's China Air, I'm, I'm, I, I missed my, my luggage <laughs> or, or stuff like that. And, and, I've had and, that experience. And, right. and we need, to, we need to, uh, to tell also different stories. Right. Uh, but for sure, the market's becoming much more mature, and I think the uh, Chinese consumers adopting exactly the same type of product. Yes. 
And there is a kind, I agree with you, kind not, of course, the vintage market is booming, yeah. but there's a kind of rage hole, yes. touch, look, comeback, Absolutely. which is definitely there, um, and which you, by the way, uh, find also in that product. Absolutely, very well done in that product. Let, let's talk about um, one thing that you also innovated, um, brand ambassadorship. And we, we haven't really seen yet what the full power of what the Breitling brand ambassadorship will be. Can you give us some hints as to what that's going to be like? Because uh, I imagine this will be a, a factor. Uh, it will be a factor. Yes. And yes, we're going to, um, to have uh, celebrities, but we're going to work also with very famous people, which you might not know from their face. But there will, whoever it will be, yes. the person will be the top in its own field. Right. And that is to be totally authentic. Yes. Um, the problem uh, we face today is that many brands do work with celebrities, right. but you cannot, you have difficulties. I have sometimes, I lose track who is with who. Um, and um, we're going to do it in a totally different way. Let's, let's talk about something we're both really passionate about, um, which is cinema. Yeah. Right? And, and you know, George, I quote you all the time as well to people. And you told me one of the best things, I think this was at your, um, your CEO breakfast that you used to have at La Reserve. And I, I remember asking you, George, why did you put your watch in this action movie? You know, because I, I, I thought it was a great placement because the watch became a character. Yeah. He was using it at the time. And you said, way, let's say, for example, America, we can consider it to, to some degree to be an emerging market for watches. Because first you have to convince the guy to buy a watch before you can get him to convince him to buy my brand, right? And, you know, there are urban centers on the East Coast and the West Coast, but there's a huge amount of America in between. And these guys have a lot of disposable income, but you're not going to convince them to read a watch magazine. You're not going to convince them to read your traditional luxury lifestyle magazine. He's not going to pick up Revolution. He's not going to log on to Hodinkee. But what's he going to do? He's going to go to the cinema and watch a hero kick ass. And when he watches that hero kick ass, he's going to be like, I see myself in that guy. And this guy's wearing, hey, he's wearing a cool watch. Maybe I should have this watch. You know, you were using the language to suit that customer. Is this something that you're going to do also with Breitling? Uh, yes, you need identification uh, platforms for, um, uh, for, uh, for, for this public, which, as I said, is a little younger at, uh, or will be younger at, uh, at Breitling. And uh, we need to define these fields, which, by the way, can be uh, also sports. So we will, there, cool. will be, there will be uh, more sports uh, elements uh, into this. Uh, but for sure, cinema, because cinema uh, and movies are uh, uh, worldwide, um, and music, by the way, um, the biggest platforms of communication you right. can... Uh, you can imagine. So this identification to uh, a sports or to a person or to a world is absolute, absolutely essential and, and you will find that uh, within our campaign too. You once told me that, that I think the ultimate goal was to have the brand participate in producing a film. Yes. And, and Breitling has so much storytelling, you know, that that maybe might be the ideal platform. Is that in, in the cards? Um, what I can tell you is that me personally, I'm going to produce a really? movie. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, <coughs> a movie. Well, no, what run will be uh, pre uh, present, and we're filming in September right. in France. Um, right. But here also, we've agreed now on the directors, the two uh, actors. Wow. Very famous. Congratulations. And um, that will be a drama comedy. Um, but um, Will you be in it? Uh, perhaps like uh, Hitchcock, you know, a little bit Cameo, uh, Cameo thing. Yeah, <laughs> great. We'll 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 have to see, but that will be that was a dream, but that's a mo that's a personal initiative. Right. And uh, some people are in wine, some people are in cheese, I'm in movies. <laughs>